All right, so, so that was uh, BJP releasing its manifesto just uh, three days to go before the Lok Sabha elections. And the BJP releasing that very comprehensive uh, Sankalp Patra there. And uh, to discuss more on this issue, we have with us uh, our... Uh, we have with us a senior journalist, uh, Aarti Jarath, uh, joining us here in the studio. A very good afternoon, ma'am, and thank you so much for joining us here on Rajya Sabha Television. So, ma'am, a very, very comprehensive document uh, there we saw BJP releasing as far as its uh, Sankalp Patra is concerned. And uh, not only that, we saw uh, Rajnath Singh, uh, we saw Sushma Swaraj, uh, and, and uh, the BJP leaders there uh, explaining in, uh, you know, in uh, details really what uh, the vision of the BJP and the Prime Minister there also, uh, you know, telling uh, uh, that uh, what is uh, the BJP's uh, promises really to the nation ahead of the 2019 elections. And, you know, days before uh, we had saw, we had seen uh, Congress releasing its manifesto where it had promised 72,000 rupees per annum to five crore poorest of the poor families. It had also talked of 22 lakh government jobs and also increasing uh, the guaranteed employment under Manrega. Do you think BJP in its manifesto has enough arsenal to negate some of uh, the Congress's promises? Um, well, you know, uh, the most significant thing I found about this manifesto, if I compare it to the one they released five years ago, was the emphasis on national security. Yes. Uh, in, you know, five years ago, the whole manifesto and its entire emphasis was on uh, the economy, uh, because at that point, uh, you know, the economy was in poor shape and there was policy paralysis, growth had slumped and so on. So the government came in on this promise of development and of, you know, repairing the economy and putting it back on track. Yes. But now five years later, and I guess this has come in the wake of, uh, you know, the sort of uh, surgical strikes, the airstrikes, uh, you know, sort of uh, the increased terrorist threat from Pakistan. Uh, the, the emphasis is on uh, increasing the defense budget, uh, shoring up our, you know, defenses, national security and so on. Yes. So that is one big shift I see in, you know, in this manifesto. True. Um, as far as the, uh, you know, sort of countering the Congress's, uh, you know, Nyai scheme. Yes. Um, actually, this manifesto, you know, is really, uh, you know, I think it was Arun Jaitley who said it represents continuity of, uh, you know, government or, or governance. Yes. So, you know, there is nothing in the manifesto really to counter the Nyai scheme of the Congress. And in fact, I found, uh, you know, the Prime Minister who is so good at acronyms normally, uh, this time he didn't have any acronym as he was delivering his speech. And it was actually the Congress that came out with this acronym of NIAI for its, uh, you know, seven, its uh, minimum income guarantee scheme. Mm -hmm. um, the, the BJP's manifesto dwells a lot on, uh, you know, what the government has already done mm -hmm. and how it intends to take, uh, you know, this forward. You know, mm -hmm. I think both Amit Shah and the Prime Minister talked about having fulfilled uh, the basic needs in the last five years. And now the next tenure will be, if they come back to power, the hmm. next term will be devoted to fulfilling expectations. Mm -hmm. So in a way, uh, I think they're trying to answer, uh, you know, whatever disappointment there may be in people because certainly expectations were raised in 2014, which, you know, not all of which have been met. Mm -hmm. But I think this time the BJP is promising and saying that you know, what we concentrated on was basic things like uh, electricity, yes. like sanitation, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, so on. And now we are going to address expectations. So Achedid will come in the next five years uh, and, you know, people should wait for it. Right. And as you just pointed out, uh, you know, that uh, there is a huge, uh, you know, uh, emphasis on uh, national security in uh, the manifesto. As far as Congress's manifesto uh, is concerned, you know, it spoke of amendment to AFSPA and also repeal of uh, sedition. But it seems, you know, the B it is uh, the BJP really, uh, as far as the national security is uh, concerned, BJP really is setting uh, the narrative here. Because we also saw Prime Minister Modi saying that nationalism is our inspiration, something that was clearly seen in the BJP's manifesto. Absolutely. And in fact, if you, uh, you know, hear the speeches of the Prime Minister over the last few weeks and of other senior BJP leaders like Amit Shah and so on, yes. you know, there is the speeches have all been laced with this very strong 
nationalist sentiment. Yes. Uh, that seems to be the BJP's main plank going into the election. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, unlike actually 2014 when development was, uh, you know, the main plank. This time the main plank seems to be national security. The Congress, definitely I think what the Congress attempted to do in its manifesto was try to address this perception that it was the team B of the BJP. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, so in the like in the last assembly elections, you know, people criticize their state manifestos in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan mm -hmm. as being very similar to the BJP's. Mm. So I think today for the national manifesto, the BJ, the Congress tried to differentiate itself from uh, the BJP and say that look, we are a more liberal government. Uh, therefore, we will talk about issues like uh, you know repealing the Sedition Act and you know, sort of diluting the AFSPA and so on. Hmm. The BJP, on the other hand, has played to its traditional strength, hmm. which is national security. That has always been a very strong narrative of the BJPs. And I think the BJP is playing to that narrative today. But isn't it uh, true that uh, BJP has not actually given up its emphasis on development? Uh, you know, uh, because this is uh, when we saw the 75 points, so majority of them actually uh, do refer to development as well because, you know, it, sp it speaks of uh, electricity where it says that most households in the country today have electricity. There are more than 8 crore toilets, 7 crore houses have been provided with gas connections and free medical treatment has also been ensured for uh, 50 crore poor people. So BJP, they are making sure that uh, the narrative of development that we had seen in 2014 manifesto actually is uh, continued in uh, this uh, manifesto as well because, you know, if you look at the alliances in UP, Bihar, they are actually trying to convert the elections into more of a caste based affair rather than focus on development. So the BJP manifesto, they're trying to assure that, you know, that focus doesn't go anywhere, isn't it? Absolutely. In fact, the Prime Minister said, uh, you know, that the three pillars for him are uh, nationalism, upliftment of weaker sections and good governance. Yes. That's what he said in his speech. Hmm. So very definitely. And, uh, you know, this whole positioning of his government as a pro-poor government committed to welfare hmm. of the poorer sections is very much there in the manifesto. And, uh, you know, he's talked about uh, pension schemes for farmers uh, above 60, for, uh, you know, sort of urban, uh, for urban labor after 60. You know, he's talked about continuing that uh, 6,000 6, rupees a year minimum income for small and marginal farmers. Um, you know, and, and a whole host of such welfare schemes are there in the manifesto. So certainly, but... I, I'm just saying the emphasis on national security is something which differentiates the 2019, uh, you know, campaign of the BJPs from hmm. the 2014 campaign. All right. Uh, but, ma'am, speaking about, uh, you know, development, because BJP, we here we saw, is targeting beneficiaries of various government schemes. So, you know, we saw uh, the talk of Jandhan, Ujwala, Prime Minister, Avas Yojana, Ayushman Bharat, the Mudra. And BJP is hope, hope, hoping that, uh, you know, people will uh, vote for the party because of these core issues. And, but uh, I want to ask you, beneficiaries, do they actually translate into votes? Uh, you, because we have seen this in state elections as well, uh, you know, MP, you know, was the most most performing state under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, top five in Ujwala as well. Uh, yet, you know, Shivrat Singh Chauhan lost, uh, uh, you know, the, the elections. So how much of uh, these beneficiary schemes actually do translate into votes? You know, I think a lot depends on whether the opposition uh, runs a good campaign on an emotive slogan or not. Hmm. Uh, if we go back to the 2009 elections, hmm. uh, which the UPA won for a second and got a second term, yes. you know, that was largely driven by the loan waiver scheme that they had announced the year before the election. Hmm. And, uh, you know, it benefited the Congress immensely, particularly three states, in three states where they won a huge chunk of seats, hmm. UP, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra. Hmm. And I think there was a general feel-good factor because of the benefits of this loan waiver, hmm. which the Congress cashed in on in the 2009 elections. Hmm. So it's not true that, uh, you know, development or benefits of development uh, do not yield votes. Hmm. They do yield votes. 
Uh, you know, and I, and I think that's what the government is banking on, having seen uh, the UPA2 come, you know, come in in 2009. Hmm. I think this, this is what the Modi government is banking on, that the benefits of all the welfare, this whole slew of welfare schemes that hmm. they started, uh, hmm. you know, from toilets to houses to gas cylinders to, uh, you know, whatever. Hmm. Um, you know, they, that they hope that people will vote them back on these schemes and you know the certainly the opposition does not seem to have a emotive slogan as yet yes uh, you know yes the congress is trying with nyai to you know catch people's imagination hmm. but uh, you know it doesn't have that kind of compelling emotive uh, slogan hmm. which could override the benefits that people may be feeling hmm. from the developmental schemes of the modi government Absolutely. And what is also um, very interesting was uh, the very fact that, uh, you know, the BJP there, uh, you know, explaining in detail how it uh, sought to, uh, you know, take views uh, from the public. In fact, Prime Minister himself, they're mentioning about uh, the way the Sankalp Patra was made. Uh, you know, he's speaking about the fact that how did they re reach out to people there wanting to know what what are their issues? What do they want uh, from the, uh, the government uh, in the centre? So that was very significant, isn't it? No, in fact, this time, uh, I think this has been the hallmark of uh, the manifestos of both the BJP and the Congress. Hmm. Because both, par both national parties, for the first time, invited suggestions from their workers, from the public, from the citizens at large, hmm. which they incorporated into their manifestos. And both claim that their manifestos are really people's manifestos rather than party manifestos as yes, such. True. So I think this has been a hallmark and it's, to my mind, a very good development hmm. because at the end of the day, every government must fulfill aspirations and expectations of the people. Hmm. And how will they do that unless people speak to them and tell them what their aspirations and expectations are? So I think that this has been a very good and healthy trend that has been started with these elections. And uh, in fact, what really has been a he healthy trend is that, you know, uh, we, are, we had earlier seen that there was not too much emphasis or should we say there was not too much of media attention earlier paid to the party's manifesto. But this time, very interestingly, uh, you know, all the party's manifestos are keenly watched by not only the media, uh, they've got media attention as well, but people are also very looking forward to what are the promises really made uh, by the parties ahead of election. I think that's a very interesting interesting and a very healthy trend. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I have never heard so much talk or so much reportage on manifestos as we are seeing in these elections. Yes. And I think that's because people's expectations from their government have really grown. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one way of mapping whether a government has performed or not is to match, uh, you know, what the government has done compared to what the government promised, uh, you know, in its election manifesto. The only, you know, one thing is that I, I do feel that governments uh, or rather political parties should release their manifesto several weeks before the elections begin. So that, you know, the, the message of the manifesto goes, percolates down to the voter and the voters can make a more informed choice about uh, which party they want to vote for. We saw the Congress release its manifesto just last week. Yes. And the BJP just three days before the first uh, round of polling, the first phase of polling in these elections. Mm -hmm. uh, Samajwadi Party did it just a few days before. Uh, you know, even the sort of TDP and all also did it just a few days before. Yes. So, um, you know, it hasn't actually kind of percolated into the election campaign and become a talking point amongst voters. Mm -hmm. So if, if we want accountability from the government, mm -hmm. I believe these manifestos should be released several weeks before the election process begins so that voters get educated and can make a more informed choice. Right. And Amam, what do you feel about uh, the focus uh, made uh, uh, that has been made, uh, you know, put on uh, Prime Minister Modi's personality himself? Because, of course, uh, the 2014 election was all about a Modi wave. Uh, but if you look at the manifesto this time, it seems to be very, very comprehensive in the sense it's not only talking about uh, the leadership, but it also talks of other issues as well. Uh, so clearly, the, while the focus on PM Modi remains, his leadership, his personality, his charm, his persona, but it also talks of uh, key issues uh, that people would want to see uh, uh, in, in, their neck, in the government. Well, I think, uh, you know, Modi has, uh, you know, tried to 
uh, you know, sort of marry these issues to his persona, uh, you know, and basically really, uh, you know, fulfilling aspirations, uh, you know, uh, helping to uplift the poor, delivering social justice and national security, mm. all woven into the persona of mm. uh, Narendra Modi. Mm. Narendra Modi himself was very, very, uh, uh, you know, sort of sober in his speech. He did not, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, kind of uh, do any chest thumping. But if we listen to what Amit Shah said, Amit Shah said that these five years when, you know, history remembers the five, first five years of the Modi government, they will be remembered as the golden era mm. of India. So, you know, uh, in a way, it was, uh, you know, it was a bit reminiscent of the, of the shining India, uh, you know, slogan with which the BJP went to polls in 20, 2004. Yes. Uh, so, but the Prime Minister himself was very, very sober hmm. and, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, said that, uh, you know, in fact, he went into great detail, yes. you know, even talking about, uh, you know, sort of the need to, you know, help fishermen hmm. in coastal areas, you know, yes. it was like that kind of detail hmm. and how, you know, you know, eradication of poverty is very important, but eradication of poverty cannot be done from air conditioned rooms. Hmm. It has to be done by the poor themselves. And for that, we need to empower the poor. So, you know, um, you know, he, he, he kind of presented, uh, you know, sort of very sober, very, uh, uh, you know, mature kind of uh, approach to issues. Right. Uh, and I think that's marked in the, you know, manifesto itself. Because, you know, remember, this is a government which is defending its turf. Yes. This is a government which has to go to the people on achievements of the last five years. Yes. And ask, seek votes on whatever they have done. Indeed. Uh, and so, in fact, they have, I think, been very constrained in the promises that they have made. Because I think the last five years have told them that it's very easy to promise when you're in the opposition. Yes. But it's much more difficult to deliver because India is so vast and so complex. Indeed. And there are so many problems in delivery. So it's it better to, to be, to you know, it's better to be cautious and sober and talk about what you can do. And uh, reach out to, to targets that are actually actu achievable. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So BJP there releasing its uh, party manifesto uh, today ahead of the elections with Amit Shah saying that the Sankalp Patra has 75 resolutions that the party aims to fulfill by 2022 when India completes 75 years of independence. And Rajnath Singh is saying that uh, the Sankalp Patra ha in fact actually lists out uh, the expectations of 130 crore Indians. Uh, well, uh, we'll continue discussing uh, the BJP's uh, Sankalp Patra in the next uh, half an hour as well but we'll take a very short break here we'll be right back uh, with uh, all the updates uh, and analysis of bjp's sankalp patra after a short break